Collecting up any gates we've got because we've knocked down all the sheds along yard two. We've got all the cattle at yard two to bring in and nowhere to put them. That's four. Five gates, zero pins. If you know, you know. Eleven gates, five pins. I've got some rebar back at the yard. I might go and try and make up a few pins. Fourteen. Trailer's full now, though. So. Matt yard two now. There's quite a few more up here, so I think we'll have enough. We'll have to have enough. Anyway, this trailer's full of gates. I'm just going to dump it off just now. Probably get to cattle tomorrow morning, so we'll decide where we're putting all these gates. We've got an ad blue tank here at yard two, but with no power, so we can't use it. So I'm going to shift this home, and that'll free up a bit more space in this bottom shed. So I'll chuck it on here with this empty IBC. Take that home with me. It used to sit in the just in the doorway of that shed, but Kev's going to put the drill in there, so we need to get past. So it needs to come out anyway. Get the drill. It could do with being undercover, so we'll definitely get that in there. We've got too many flipping bales. Anyway, right. Let's get this trailer home run out of space and this is before all the steel arrives from the shed and the concrete panels and the, the gates and the castle crush and the troughs and the f ah well not a, it's not an awful issue to have i've got a boot full of empty chemical drums take them along there's a potato box at home filled with chemical drums so just build up a few potato boxes then take them away to be recycled there's a dug over my shoulder well hey gun certificate came back i have been granted it for another five years. Me and the old man have just been looking at the shed. Steel's getting made at the moment. It's just a couple of wee finite details out with the shed and floor levels and whatnot to sort out. Water, because I've got this borehole, we need to plumb that in. The water that's going into the shed, I want valves below the floor level so that on frosty nights, I can open it up and backwash anything that's in the pipes in the shed out of that so that doesn't freeze and then I can flush it in the morning, give it a blast, fill the troughs again, then backwash it again. So we need to deal with that, we need to build a wee hut to um, insulate all that. And there's inverters and bits and bobs for borehole um, stuff in there, so we're just figuring out where we're going to put that. The space is vanishing quickly. It's quite... Flipping stressful all this jazz, isn't it? It's a lot to think about and you always think like flipping heck, what are we doing? Are we doing this wrong? Are we making a meal of it? Oh god. Just gotta keep going. Looks like we're having a farm rope. We're selling up all this machinery in the field. So where I'm standing right now and up here might might make that yard rather than further up that way at a higher level. Is it the right decision? Is it the wrong decision? Not a scooby. 90% of the time I have no idea what the f I'm talking about. Top of that post, floor level of the new shed. So that, that line there is the bottom edge of it. And then it goes out just beyond the tank. So that's like the corner of the new shed. Bang, bang. And then, so these poles, they're coming down. So we're going to push the yard out a wee bit that way because we need exits out of centre passage of the shed and from mucking out that way. So we'll go out enough to basically do a U-turn with a trailer and tractor. And then... We'll come, so this will be bottom edge. We've got that height of concrete panel, right? We want to build a hut in here that houses all the water and various bits and bobs valves for water flow out of the shed. So we want to put our retaining panel down that way. We've already got a retaining panel that way to hold in the material that's under the shed that way. If that makes sense, because that's floor level and I'm, I'm against the outside wall of the shed right now. I'm leaning against it. Water and stuff here. Floor level, ground levels where my hand is right now, up to the air on the tank. So then we need to run a slope to get up to that level because all the bales are going to be in there. So we need to run them up and then we make more of a yard for turning lorries, which is normally right there, but that's going to disappear. It's not going to disappear that much, actually. <sighs> Mineral lick buckets. Magnesium, there's a bit of garlic in here too, but there we go. I've never had these before. Solid stuff. It's just, I think it's pretty much just molasses with loads of minerals. So they lick it away. It's solid. It's like a, like a stone. Anyway, we've chucked one out here for the Highlanders and the rest are going to go along the road to the cows. There you go, beasts. Have a look at that. 
Oh, sniff, sniff. That smells sweet. Oh yeah, you beauty. Straight in. It's like the first wee lick of beer on a night out. Oh, you beauty. 40 cows in this field, so I don't know how many I need. 40 cows and 40 calves, so maybe chuck three out. Needing new pins um, for gates we've got, because we're really low on pins. So I've just cut a bit of rebar. Well, this was a piece that was this length already. Might be a bit short. I'm going to go out to a gate and check, but I just took the bandsaw to it, cut half a notch in it, keeled it over with a hammer and then welded the gap. Perfect. Cut the slot in there now, and then that'll be the top bit. It's 90 degrees to the rest of the pin. Just like that. If I had a hydraulic press or something, I could just put it in. But well, this will do the job. Right, there we go. One went absolutely mental, but it's fine. I need to show my true farmer welding. Can't be messing about with good welds all day. Just means I get to show off my grinder skills. And just like that, you'd never know I made a meal of it. Right, back in the sprayer, I left 100 litres in the tank because I'm going to spray off the tulip ground. I spoke to a man who grows a lot of tulips down in Norfolk. I think he's the biggest commercial grower in the UK. Long story short, he says, he advised me, as long as there's zero green on the tulips, they're fine to spray off. Rattle them over with a sprayer, get that out of the road. I've waited till seven o'clock at night just now because don't want to be, they're right next to the farm shop. And we prefer spraying and spreading, spreading fur on the fields around the shop late at night when there's not people about and you're asking for trouble, basically. We wait till the end of the day or once everyone's cleared out or first thing in the morning. Here we are, this wee patch. There's not a big patch. I mean, 100 litres is plenty. I need to figure out where I'm going to line up, so I don't want to spray off any of that barley. And obviously because we uh, drilled them by hand, um, well, a wee machine on the back of an old um, Massey, I didn't drive straight enough. And this gap's narrows at the far end. I don't want to run them down either. I'm committing to driving over the top of this one. I know the field tapers in a wee bit and it gets narrow up there, so I'm going to have to miss a bit here. Uh, I don't know how it's going to work. We'll figure it out once we get over there. We're off. First time I've sprayed tulips anyway. Just about perfect where I'm driving. It tapers in now, so skirt over as far as I can this way. Yeah, it's a bit of a squeeze in here. Oh, running over my dad's precious grass. Right, let's just close the door to my abomination of a workshop right now. The mountain of bales grows. Duncan Kev have uh, actually put some bales out already. So look, the, the plan, the plan, oh gee, this is some plan. Cattle are coming out that gate behind me over there, away in the field. And they're coming up through the yard and they're going in that doorway. Cause we've got a bit of space in there. Put a line of bales up there or machinery. And I need to block off that gap there down into the field. And then hopefully they don't jump through any of these bales. Could be a shambles, could be cattle everywhere. Right, we can get this quad bike off and I'm not going to bother with the ramp since I am a lazy bandit. If you just step on it, she flies off the end, no bother. Hold on, one more thing. Straight from the watering hole. <coughs> Who do you think you are? Squaring up to a big calf like that? I don't think so. So, do you like the new yard? The makeshift yard for the cattle? Are they gonna jump that? Hope not. Are they gonna jump that? Hope not. I'll get the combine out in the morning, block that gap. I didn't film any of it, but the makeshift yard is finished. I was just shifting bales and trailers and I think they'll jump over one bale. It's higher than a normal fence, so. Anyway, we've got a makeshift yard, so we're gonna run them all the way up. 
into that shed. <laughs> 